Hey, Dave Melinda here, Positive Polarity Podcast. Hope things are going awesome for you this week. I had to go up to Canada this week to find an awesome guy. So we are going to unpack something, but I got a really kind of a tough question for you today. And the question is, are you seeking people out or are they seeking you out? And, you know, I, I was like looking at that and I'm like, man, you know, I got a podcast. I wrote a book. I this, I that, you know, I start listing these things in my mind. And then I'm like, shoot, no one's looking for me. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, the guy that asked me this question, I totally got to get involved. So I'm honored to be hanging out with Nikki Blue. How are you today, sir? Man, Dave, I am pumped to be here, brother. I'm blessed and grateful. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. You're the founder of E-Circle Academy. So fill us in on what's going on at E-Circle Academy. Well, what we do, brother, is we um, love working with entrepreneurs. And what we do for them is we help them add one to two zeros at the end of their annual income while working 10 to 20 hours less per week. And let me start off by telling you a bit about my backstory, because I think that's important. Okay. So I'm originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. And, um, you know, when I was a young boy, my late father, God rest his soul, he, he saw there was a, a revolution happening in Iran, the Islamic revolution. And he saw that this was not going to be a great place for him to raise his family. Sure. So he got us out of there and we eventually settled in Canada. And I thank God every day for my dad taking us out of tyranny and into freedom. Sure. You know, I know that there's a lot of folks these days uh, that, you know, for them, it's fashionable to say the West, America, so oppressive, so racist, so sexist. And yeah. I push back hard against that. I go, are you kidding me? This is yeah. the freest, most amazing, tolerant place on earth. In <laughs> Iran right now, right yeah. now, as we speak, there are people that are being killed by the regime. Because a few weeks back, a young woman named Mahsa Amini, 22 years old, went out in the street with her hair partially uncovered. It is against the law in Iran for women to go out in the street uncovered. Think about this. And wow. they killed her for it. And wow. they killed 200 people in these protests. You know? And this is all I have to say. We all need to be grateful right. for the freedoms that we get to have here. This Amen. is the most incredible place on earth. And to me, freedom is the most important thing about it. And sure. I've always been a champion for freedom, for free expression and for free enterprise. My late father, he was an entrepreneur, Dave. Yeah. Dad, greatest guy I, I, I'd ever known. If you needed a job, he'd get you a job. Nice. If you were looking to start a business, he'd help you out. Even if you were going to compete with him, he didn't care about that. He just wanted to help people. And wow. if you worked for him and you didn't have enough money to buy a house, a car, an apartment, and you wanted to, dad would help you out. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh my God, who is this guy? Who would do that? Yeah. Well, the late, great Napoleon Ballou, my late father would do that. <laughs> and then you might go, why? Well, first of all, he was a Christian. He yeah. believed he'd been blessed by God Almighty. And it was his duty to share those blessings with others. But secondly, he did it because he could. He had the financial wherewithal as a successful entrepreneur to be able to give. It was incredible. And I, I worshiped my dad. I thought he was the greatest, greatest human being alive. I wanted to be just like him. So I eventually became an entrepreneur, Dave. And you know what I found out, man? There's a lot of good people, good entrepreneurs who are out there and they're suffering. And the reason they're suffering is because they don't want to be seen as pushy. They don't want to be seen as salesy. They don't want to be seen as reeking of commission breath. You know what I'm talking about, brother? I do. So I hear you. these folks wouldn't go after business that they should be going after and they wouldn't make money that they should be making. And then some charlatan marketer would go and scoop that business up with no compunctions and they yep. wouldn't deliver for those people these good entrepreneurs would have. So the sum total of goodness went down in the world. And I saw this and I thought, oh my God, oh my God, what if we, we got to help these people? How? I racked my brains. I go, well, wait a minute. What, what if we reframed selling to serving? So we did that. We showed people how to, how to not think about selling and think about serving. Nobody wants to be sold. Dave, you don't want to be sold. I don't want to be sold. 
Yep. But we all want to be served by a caring human being. Yep. And remember, the person sitting in front of you, that's someone's son, that's someone's daughter, that's someone's husband, someone's wife, someone's father, someone's mother. Right. That yep. person is a hero to somebody. That person has been disappointed by life, maybe even been disappointed by someone just like you. Yeah. And it's your job to come from heart and love. Because remember, what is business? Business is about the three P solution. Business is about people. Business is a people game, not a numbers game. Business is about solving acute problems for wonderful people for wonderful profit. That's all it is. Business is about solving acute problems for wonderful people at wonderful profit. Problems, people, profit. That's the awesome. three P solution, brother. Nikki that's Billu awesome. came up with that one. And I'll tell you what, you do that for people. That's the first step in building a glorious seven figure a year business is sure. come from your heart, show that you care and don't sell, sir. Well, I tell you what, and that's thanks for, thanks for hitting the ground running on that. That was uh that was a great introduction to this. And there are so many ways that we can go. And I want to touch on the selling piece because, you know, people love to buy, but they hate to be sold. You know, people love to buy stuff. And I know, you know, I don't know how it is in Canada, but down here in the U.S., if you're in the mall and you're walking down the mall and they have these little kiosks in the middle of the mall and the guy's trying to sell you roofing or gutters or windows or whatever, man, you can, you make eye contact with that guy and it's like over, right? <laughs> and I see people He's looking the other way, you know, well, don't look at him, honey, don't look at him. You know, it's like, you know, and it's so sad what sales has, what negative connotations sales brings up to most people. And I always think back to third grade, you know, I remember Nikki, when the teacher said, okay, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Right. They always ask that question. And I don't remember anybody saying, oh, can't wait to graduate high school. I want to go down to Bob's used cars and sell cars for a living. You know, we were firemen, policemen, doctor, nurse, whatever, but sales never seemed to make that list because it's just such a, not a positive way. So I love that you're turning that from selling to serving and thinking that's a, a, a mind shift, you know, that we have to make. But I think it's a really important one because, yeah, we're, I would hate for my mom to have a slimy guy at the front door selling her something she didn't need, you know, and I'm not saying that all salespeople are like that, but again, that's that connotation. So how did you make that shift? Was it your dad that kind of got that shift started in you? How did that start? Yeah, absolutely. It was my father, but I've, I've also had uh, the good fortune of having some incredible mentors. You know, um, one of my good friends who's a mentor to me, his name is Mark Von Muser. He, he worked for um, Anthony Robbins, helped him build a really big, uh, you know, coaching and leadership um, business within his business. Sure. Mark, Mark always says it like this. He says, people are buying their way into something or buying their way out of something. Right. So they don't care about you or your program. Stop selling your damn program. Nobody cares. Yeah. I never talk about my program. You'll never know what my program is unless you ask me specifically. Sure. I talk about you. I talk about your situation. I talk about the pain that you're dealing with. You know, you think about this. OK, if a person's sitting in front of you, I help people make more money. Right. I had a zero to two zeros while working 10 to 20 hours less per week. So let's say, you know, you're a, a coach, an executive coach or whatever. And let's say you've been in business five years. I'm, I'm, I'm making all this up and sure. you're successful. You're making six figures, right? You're, you're doing like a hundred, a hundred and a quarter a year. Yep. Good business. But you're in what I call the golden handcuff zone between 60,000 and a quarter million where the money's good, but it's not, you know, it's not dream money. You know what I mean? It's not the money that's going to make your dreams come true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. And you're like in there, you're going, okay, yeah, people think I'm doing good, but no, man, I want to do better. I want to make a half a million, a million, two million dollars a year. That's a guy. And, and because you haven't had that money, you know, you, you, you want a nice home, but it's not your dream house. It's not what your wife's always wanted for you. You fly, you go on vacation, but you don't fly private jet or first class very often. Maybe, maybe never. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You, yeah. 
you, you, you buy yourself nice things, but you don't buy yourself those things you've been dreaming about all your sure. life sure. because, you know, they're at a certain price point that it just doesn't make sense for you to do it. And sometimes this bothers you and you, your, your self-concept goes down. You don't feel as good about yourself. You don't believe in yourself. You might not tell anybody this, but inside you're like, ah, oh, I'm an imposter. I'm a loser, whatever. That kind of crap goes on. And sometimes, you know, this, this tension within, this dissatisfaction spills over into your relationship. You might fight with your, with, your, with, your, with your wife. You know, you might fight with your kids, right? And sometimes you might stay up at night and go, oh my God, is this all there is? You're stressed out, right? Like that's the right. kind of crap that happens. And yeah. when I sit down and I talk with someone like you, I dig deep into all of that. And then I go, how long has this been going on? And you might say, well, it's been going on for two, three, four, five years, whatever. I say, what would it be like if in six months this was still going on? And you'd probably say, well, look, you know, I can pay the bills, but I'd still be dissatisfied. Still blah, 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 blah. A year still going on. Oh, well, again, pay the bills, good, blah, 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 blah. I'm not happy, blah. And then I go, so, man, like, is it acceptable to you for this to continue as, as this? Because sure. I need you in a place where you go, no, it is no longer acceptable to me to be making a buck and a quarter. I want I want to make a half a mil. I want to make a mil. I want to make two mil. Hell, Nikki, I want to make three mil a year. And I'm going to go, okay, you want to make three mil a year. You're making 125. It's no longer acceptable for you to be stuck here. Great. Here's how we get you out of it. That's when I briefly talk about my program, sure. you know, as the bridge to <laughs> yep. get you from where you are to where you want to go. And then I'll ask you a question. And you know what my question isn't? It's not, would you like to buy my program? You know what my question is? Would you like to take action now to get out of this stuck place you've been in for two, three, four, five years sure. and finally get you to where you want to be making half a million, a million, two million, three million? Are you ready to take action to do that today? And then if you say yes, I'm going to go, great. Here's, here's what the investment is. That's sure. it. That yep. is how I speak to people. And the problem is that most folks, well, you need to talk. I got to tell you all about my program. My program's great. My program's this. My program's that. Nobody cares about your damn program. They care right. about themselves. They care about their problems. They care about their pain. They don't care about you and your program. Stop right. talking about your damn program. Stop yeah. putting yourself into the into the into the equation. Get yourself out of the equation. Right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, well, good. and you brought up a word I want to kind of circle back to, and it's that imposter piece. Because probably there's people listening right now, you know, in this situation, Nikki, where they are really excited about what you're saying, but then there's this little voice in their head going, ah, oh, that's not for you. You'll never make that kind of money. You don't have the education. You've never done it before. You're not a John Maxwell or you're not a, you know, Tony Robbins. You know, there's those thoughts. And then it kind of stymies. It really limits. Yeah, you're probably right. And it's just this vicious circle. So I'm just curious for that person listening right now, Nikki, what would your you know, what's your first step in trying to fight that uh, imposter syndrome? How do you get Such out of that loop? Question. Such a great question. The reason they feel that way is because all the attention is on them. They're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about their client. If they stop thinking about themselves and they start thinking about their client, they won't have time to have an imposter syndrome. And I'll tell you a little story. Okay. There's a young man. He came to us, Dave. This man's name was Dan, right? Another D. Dave, Dan, it's awesome stuff, right? So Dan was 25 when I met him and he was a good dude. You know what I'm talking about? One of these guys, you meet him, you want to, you want, you want all your friends to know, to be friends with a guy like that. You root for him to win. Just like you see him, you smile. You go, that, that guy's a good dude, man. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know that kind of person, right? Yep. So Dan came to me and he was a personal fitness trainer. Okay. So he just was like excited to like get his business going and help people. And, but he wasn't having much success. He had seven clients. He was making 12, 1300 a month. Now he lives in Toronto. Toronto is like the New York city of Canada. If you know <laughs> anything about the cost of living in the New York city, you know about the cost of living in Toronto, 12, sure. $1,300 a month. is not really going to cut it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just yeah. not. 
he borrowed money from his mom and dad. It was bad. And he came to me and, you know, he really wanted to help people. And I said, Dad, who do you help? He goes, Nick, I can help anybody. I can help you get strong. I can help you get fit. I'm like, slow down, Dan. Dan, no, 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 man. No, no, no. Who do you help? No, no, no. I, I really, I can't help anybody. And I'm like, like anybody with a wallet and a pulse? And he's like, oh, that's, that's good, Nick. That's good. I suppose so. And then I go, no, 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 that's not going to work. You need to narrow your focus. And you can't say, I'll do anything for them. So he goes, okay, 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 Nikki. I got it, I got it. So you know what? I help people with weight loss. That's good. First step, weight loss. Then, then okay. Um, secondly, um, I want to work with doctors. My dad's a doctor. Nikki, my dad's a doctor. He's a good guy and he's overweight and there's a lot of overweight doctors and they make a lot of money. And I'm like, oh my God, Dan, that's not a good message. My dad's a doctor and you make a lot of money. Come work with me. <laughs> Didn't work out for him. And yeah. then I said, Dan, it's not working out. You need another one. He goes, okay, okay. Good. Let, let me narrow my niche more. I work with cardiologists. Oh my God, cardiologists, they, they, they have even less time than doctors. And, you know, they make more money than doctors. I'm like, oh my God, Dan, Nick. The message is you make more money than doctors. Come work with me. Now. All of a sudden, through serendipity, Dan started to work with a Paralympic athlete who had a missing leg, childhood accident, right? This guy was um, Afro-Cuban. He had a really cool name, Papito Wilson. Hmm. And he wanted you to pronounce it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so if you sure. talk to, you couldn't call him Papito. You have to go Papito, right? That's how you <laughs> liked it, right? So um, anyways, so Dan and Papito, they started to work together and um, he got Papito in great shape. He went back, won some medals at the Paralympic Games. And man, it really touched his heart. You know, he, he loved working with this man. He loved the results he got for him. And he goes, Nikki, I love working with, with this man. I love the results I've gotten for him. I want to work with people with missing limbs. I can help these people get really strong, you know, and, and I can help them really get some, some self-confidence, right? I'm like, okay, go for it. Dave, in six weeks, he signed up 400 clients. Wow. Six weeks, 400 clients. People sought him out sure. you understand yeah. what i'm saying yep. sought him out he could no longer do one-on-one -on -one coaching he had to do group coaching to fit it all in sure. and he added not one zero but two zeros to his monthly income yeah. awesome. you think about that six yeah. figures a month as a personal trainer how many yeah. personal trainers do you know who make six figures a year never mind yeah. six figures a yeah. month you yeah. know what i'm saying and yeah. why was this powerful because he took the attention off him and the money he wanted to make for himself with the sure. doctors and the cardiologists. And buddy, he put that attention on the other side where sure. it belonged. And imagine why would so many people sign up with him? Well, first of all, nobody was going after people with missing limbs because other trainers go, these guys don't have limbs. They can't work out. I'm not going right. to bother. Yep. They were wrong. They made a mistake. Sure. Secondly, imagine put yourself in the position of someone with a missing limb because I am not in that position, but I can just imagine wouldn't be thrilled that don't have all my limbs, you, you know, if that was the case and they probably aren't thrilled at that. And they probably had some sort of limiting belief around what this meant for what's possible for them with exercise and with self-belief and self-concept. So when Dan came to them and his message was, I'm going to make you strong and fit and powerful the underlying message was, you're going to be just as good, just as wonderful, just as accepted by yourself as anybody else. That's why he became so wow. successful. Wow. Took That's the message, crazy. took the, uh, the focus off himself and put it on them. Yeah, and I saw him on your website. So holy cow, big strap and strong guy. So it was uh, awesome yeah, to yeah. see that video. And I think you bring up another point, and I want to bring up that for the listeners, the limiting belief. And you know, there's things that limit us from accomplishing those pieces. You know, um, there's a visual, if you Google, you know, uh, comfort zone, you see most people are in their comfort zone, they're safe, they're in control, and but they want to get to the growth zone. But in between the fear, um, in between the comfort zone and the growth zone is the fear zone. And that's where we start making excuses. That's where we justify rationalize and in that case probably create those limiting beliefs so 
the interesting thing for the listener is there's a lot of head work, head trash, um, you know, mind work that has to be done before we're able to be successful. And I think it's funny, a lot of people that um, they just walk in, think, oh, I have this great product and everyone's going to buy it, you know, and like you said, this guy was having people seek him out. And I think that's a really cool place to be is where people are actually seeking you out. There's so many people that are trying to promote themselves, like you said, um, but where are the people like that, that, I mean, I hope they hang out in a group because that'd be a great group to be where everybody wants to be that person and be involved with that person. So I'm assuming you end up, that's, that's one of your goals for your clients is to be in that spot where people actually seek you out, correct? 100%, brother, 100%. That's what we want to help people accomplish. Um, and there's a, there's a bunch of different things you need to do in order for that to be possible. So um, number one is you need to make a decision, a decision that that's what you want that you want to be sought after and you want to grow a certain type of business, a certain size of business. Yep. And a decision is about killing off the alternatives, right? Decisiveness is, 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 a, is a trait of the successful. Secondly, you need to be committed to victory. Dave, you can't be one of these folks who's like, uh, I'll give it a try. I'll kick the tire. But if it doesn't work out, I, I quit. Yeah. No, you got to be willing to be bad before yep. you're good. You got to yep. be willing to be bad before you're good. You know what I'm saying? And thirdly, you got to be coachable. You got to take the coaching. You're not going to make this happen doing the same old things you've always done. And then fourthly, you got to be resourceful because it's going to cost you. There is an investment of money, of time, and of energy required. You've got to do it. And it's impossible for you to be successful if you're not resourceful. You know, um, Robin Sharma, who was a client of mine when I used to be a personal fitness coach, he wrote the book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, which sold millions and millions of copies. Um, one day when I was training him, I asked him, hey, Robin, you know, you, you work with a lot of guys. You help them become successful. Uh, how would I double my income in a year? And he goes, oh, Nikki, that's simple. I'm like, okay, tell me. He said, all you got to do is triple, triple your investment in personal and professional development. That's all. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, listen. You're the most important asset in your business. You, if you're not getting better, your business isn't going to improve. So yeah. you've got to buy the courses, attend the conferences, hire the coaches, become part of masterminds and peer groups. So I listened to him, you know, like I wasn't spending a lot on personal development that year. Um, that was a while ago. Uh, and I've spent over the years now over a quarter million dollars on my personal and professional development, over a quarter million dollars each time it was a big decision but today yeah. i make that money back within a couple of months yeah why because i understand the importance of investing in yourself yeah. i'll tell you a story about um a uh, a client of ours he was also a personal fitness trainer um he came to us and he he wasn't struggling as badly as dan he was doing about three thousand a month but uh he came to our program, signed up, did it, and signed up for a four-year mastermind. And it was a big gulp for him. But he signed up, good to go. And within a few months, he was going from three to five thousand dollar months to twenty thousand dollar months. And wow. his best month was forty-two thousand wow. dollars. And he wrote this long email. And in that email, he basically said. You know, when I came to these guys, I, I had to borrow money from my girlfriend to pay for sure. <laughs> the tuition. But I learned a lot about how to be successful. And in less than a year, uh, I paid off all my debt. He had a, uh, like a $40,000 debt uh, line of credit. It was gone. And I've got $100,000 in the bank. And why? Because he made a decision that he was no longer going to tolerate himself being a loser sure. in business. And he made, a, he, he made a commitment that he was going to do the work. And he was there for a good, he actually stayed with us for two years. He ended up mm -hmm. buying his own gym uh, right now. And 
he went from being, uh, you, you know, a guy who's struggling to a guy who's a winner in life and a winner in business. That's great. And it's because he made a decision to go all in and invest in himself. It's that well, and, Yeah. And I think the word coachable, Nikki, is really a good word because I think that a guy like Tiger Woods or Michael Jordan wouldn't nearly have been as successful if they wouldn't have surrounded themselves with coaches, you know, Amen, brother. well and, said. Yeah. And it's just interesting because whether it's peer group, mastermind, personal coaching, whatever it is, if you don't have somebody kind of watching, coming alongside you, helping you, my next book I'm working on is on business blind spots. And, you know, we're going to talk about those in the book. And it's like, how do you know a blind spot if you don't, you, you don't know if you look in you, there's a spot on your car where you have a blind spot and without a mirror there, you can't see that. So you know, I don't know how many businesses derail every year because they're so set in doing it their way. I don't need any help from anybody. Nobody knows what I'm going through, you know. Um, so I just encourage anybody listening that if you're not involved with a coach, it can be whatever, whatever that looks like to be coachable, to have somebody challenge your decisions on occasion to really, you know, I mean, I watch Tiger Woods swing and it's perfect but i tell you what a swing coach looks at it and goes yep there's the problem i mean that's that's priceless like you said i mean he pays whatever he pays for a coach and man he wins the next tournament or he moves up on the leaderboard whatever and whatever that looks like for you listening i just always we always encourage people to, to, to you don't have to do this alone and, you know, so I, I love peer groups and mastermind groups to be able to, to really help um, our potential. So thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I did want to ask you a question because I saw on your website, it talked about um, having a larger impact. Now we were talking about seeking people out versus them seeking us out you know, that kind of, it scratches one itch, but there's another itch here where just a larger impact in the world today for whatever reason. And I think that that's so cool. I think about your example of, you know, your fitness guy, you know, the impact that he had for people that, you know, were missing a limb and how, how, how important in, in your life, you know, Nikki is your impact on other people and share, share that with the group, if you would. Man, that is such a powerful and brilliant question. Um, do you mind if I answer it with a story? Yeah, absolutely. Love it. So a few years ago, a woman came to us who had been the country director for Canada for one of the world's largest and oldest personal development companies. And she brought someone on board with her um, that she thought was very talented to help her run the company and grow it. Kind of like um, Steve Jobs back in the 80s when he brought on John Scully to Apple, remember? Yep. And kind of like Steve Jobs and John Scully, they got along for a while at first, but eventually they didn't. And kind of like Steve Jobs and John Scully, she got forced out of her company. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Um, so that happened. And um, for 18 months, she was floundering, just mm -hmm. unsure of what was next for her, what to do. Sure. Someone introduced her to us and we loved on her. She's a wonderful, beautiful, vibrant soul. And um, we helped her get clear on her niche. We helped her get clear on uh, her message. So no more male messages. And she was eager. She was keen. So in her first month, Dave, she did $10,000. In her second month, she did $12,000. In her third month, she did $18,000. But in her fourth month, man, she broke out and did $62,200. Nice. And she was helping entrepreneurs who owned their own company, 10 million plus, that were burning out. She reversed the burnout. That was her message. It's great. Wow. So she lives in Ottawa. I live in Toronto. That's about a five hour drive. And um, my eldest son was 12 at the time, plays soccer, and he had a tournament in Ottawa, and she had a son his age. So I called her up and I said, hey, how'd you like to have you and your son come and 
uh, watch game with us while we're here in Ottawa, maybe grab some lunch. And she goes, yeah, that sounds great. So we did that. Everybody had a great time. And, sure. you know, they, they went out their way. We drove back home to Toronto. A few weeks later, uh, I was having one of my quarterly branded thought leader immersion workshops, which I'm actually having another one starting tomorrow in Toronto. So it's pretty cool. And um, this is where we teach people how to add one to two zeros to their business, sure. having a greater impact and um, while working 10 to 20 hours less per week, right? So we were at the portion in the workshop where we did our famous upsell. This is where the new people would have an opportunity to sign up for a year long educational and mastermind program. Sure. So the way I do it is I don't do the pitch myself. I kind of ask other people, you, you know what I mean? Uh, people that have been our members. So I just said, hey, anyone want to share their experience? And before I could pick anybody, she bounded up on stage and said, me, me. I'm like, okay, very good. <laughs> And she looked around on the stage, brother, at the audience. And then she started to cry. She sobbed and she blew her nose and she was crying and crying. And I mean, I'm looking at her, brother. And like any man, when faced with a crying woman, I panicked. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> right? <Yep. laughs> That's where I went. Oh, man. So she turns around and looks at me in between her tears and sobs, says, Nikki, you didn't know this, but when you and your little son came to visit me and my little son, my little son, in that excited way little boys do, said, Mommy, 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 who are we going to go meet? And she says, oh, we're going to go meet Nikki Baloo and his son. And she said, all of a sudden, my sweet, excitable little boy became very serious and very quiet and very somber. And he said to me, oh, Mommy, are we going to get to meet the man who saved our family. Mm. Now, brother, I'm a old school masculine man. I don't cry in public. Yeah, sure. I cried. Yeah. I cried. We hugged. And she looks at me and she goes, you didn't know this, but um, I hadn't made an income in 18 months when I came to you. The mm. bank was about to foreclose on our home for non-payment of our mortgage. My husband and I, we were fighting every day in front of our three small children. Yeah. It looked like we were going to break up. I was about to lose my precious family. You literally helped us save our family. Wow, that's awesome. So, brother, I hugged her. She hugged me, and we cried, and everybody clapped. And here's what I learned that day, that you never know what someone's dealing with. You never know what someone's dealing with, the hell they're going through because they don't feel comfortable in telling you. And you right. never know what you caring about somebody, what kind of impact that can have beyond business on a family staying together. Right. And um, I every day look to be able to serve someone else the way that I served her. That's my goal. Yep. And I'll tell you something else. Normally, um, after, you know, people share, I hand out the registration paper and, you know, people, some people sign up, some people don't, and some people need a little persuasion. On this day, there were eight people in the room. And keep in mind, this is a high ticket program, right? Sure. They all immediately signed up. Yeah. There was no persuasion required. And two of them had come to me beforehand and said, we're not going to sign up for anything else. One fellow in particular went to me and goes, Nick, 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 come on, come here, come on, come on, come on, come on. He says, listen, I know, I know you're going to have an upsell. I know, see, I've been around the block. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I just want you to know I'm not going to be buying your upsell. No, 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 sir. No, sir, I will not be buying your upsell. No. I don't want you to be disappointed. Right? I'm like, All right, whatever. <laughs> He was the first fellow to sign up. Wow. That's awesome. He came to me and he said, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's your fault, right? He said, uh, I wasn't going to sign up for your upsell. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's great. Uh, and he said, but I guess you're not full of crap. Oh. And I do need some help. 
Yeah. And that taught me something. It's not personal. Sure. And this fellow has probably been burned by somebody. Somebody's probably <clears throat> disappointed him, taken sure. his money and delivered shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I strive to understand that these folks that are sitting in front of me, it's my job to love on them and serve them and what happened here, the impact of that wasn't just on this woman and her family. It was on everybody in that room, including these two skeptical people. Sure. It changed yeah. their life. Yeah. And that's what I'm looking for as far as impact is concerned. And, you know, I think we all want that. And if you come from your heart and, and you care about people, then you're going to do great. Right. Absolutely. Well, and I think impact, thank you for sharing that awesome story. I mean, it, for the listener, I don't think impact has to always be these huge situations like, you know, Nikki just shared. Sometimes you're making an impact on a client or a teammate. Sometimes you're making an impact in your family that is really you're not even aware of. And so I just want to encourage everybody to think about this week, you know, how can I make an impact? How can I impact somebody around me in a positive way? Because imagine if the whole world did that, if there's like a one hour time period where the whole entire world made a positive impact on one other human being, I mean, this place would just go crazy, right? For one hour, you know, there probably wouldn't be any shooting, there wouldn't be any this, there wouldn't be any of that, right? And there would just be a time of, you know, of reflection and, and, and thankfulness, there's so much that can come out of impact. So I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciative that you shared that. As we start to land today, a couple of things that you mentioned were, you know, for somebody that's listening that needs clarity, you know, they're not really sure where they're headed. They may be in that job where it's 50 weeks a year, they're just showing up and then they live for those two weeks of vacation. And then even in the two weeks of vacation, Nikki, they're, they're irritated because it costs too much and the lines are too long and the drinks aren't right, whatever, Right. I mean, how do you help somebody with clarity? I know that's a huge topic and hard to discuss, um, you know, in a short amount of time. But I'm just curious for somebody that's really unclear, unsure was the other word that you used. Do you have any feedback for them to kind of start at least in the right direction? That's a good question. So clarity is something that takes time. So uh, the story I told you about Dan, the, uh, the young man, the fitness, mm -hmm. uh, personal fitness trainer, that took months for us to get to that point of clarity, right? It is not a one and done. I'm going to give you a quick hack and oh, sure. you're going to be clear, right? So here's what I'll say. If you really are unclear, um, I'll offer this to any of your listeners. I do a, um, a call, I call it a success call. It's free of charge. I'll sit down with you, tell me your specific situation and we'll help you get some clarity. Out of that call, you'll, you'll be clear on what you need to do in order to take the business to the next level. Super, that's super awesome. clear. Super, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I mean, and that's what, again, goes back to that coachable piece. If we're stuck somewhere, you know, I mean, I don't know how to move forward. That's why I ask, you know, if I don't know how to fix my car, that's why I go get the car. I don't know what I'm doing. Now I could probably read up or watch YouTube all night. You know, who knows? I, you know, I don't know why us guys are so intent on doing it ourselves. You know, we could be walking down the street with bullet holes in us and we're just keep walking, you know, walk past the hospital. I don't Hey, my dad told me to just rub dirt on it and get back to work, you know? And so that's, that's where I just encourage people listening that if you're stuck in that spot, if you're unclear, you know, um, Nikki's offering you an opportunity to, of, to at least start the journey you know, get an understanding of what the journey looks like. And I think that's the cool part is maybe the journey isn't for you and that's okay. You know, it, it at least gives you some clarity on what next steps are in your world. So I think that's, that's the cool piece of this. There's so much here. 
Um, you know, you also have a podcast called Thought Leader Revolution. So if yeah. anyone's listening and they want to learn more about some of the thought leaders and, and what's going on there, um, you had mentioned some pretty high powered names show up on that uh, podcast. Um, you, you, you wrote some books. So, you know, Nikki's a, a wealth of information. And as I try to say every week, if you walk away from this time and you don't value anything, you didn't learn anything, you don't, nothing changes in your life. You know what? That's on you. Um, you know, we're here to provide you ideas. We're here to provide you with some, you know, path to success. If you don't want to take it, that's totally up to you. Just don't get mad at Nikki or I because, you know, Nikki's given you, uh, he's given you a free call. He's given you a free podcast where you can listen to some of the other people. You know, there's a 40 minute mastermind class that we're going to put in the chat that we definitely want to get your feedback on. There's just a ton here. And again, if you move on and don't take advantage of it, that's cool. I just, but don't get pissed at people around you because you probably are seeing more of this happen of people trying to help and you're just resistant to it. So what do you tell, what's, what's your recommendation for somebody that's resisting right now, even, um, you know, thinking about reaching out to you? What, what do you tell people in that case? Well, you know, that's a great question. There's an author by the name of Steve Pressfield. He wrote a book called The War of Art. And in it, he talks about this force within each of us that he calls resistance that basically tries to derail our success. It is insidious. It will never stop. And you have a choice. You can either um, give in to resistance or you can give in to your dreams. Hmm. It's up to you. Yeah. If you give in to resistance, your dreams will never be realized. You're always going to stay small. You're always going to live less than the life you were meant for. But if you give in to your dreams, you're, you're going to grow and you are going to live the life that you were meant for. So choose. Yeah. What a, what a great spot to end. Holy cow. So you give in to something, whether it's your dreams or your resistance. So that's on you. That's not on us. And that's on me. I have to take those words. Nikki has to take those words the same way. You know, we all have that daily discovery in ourselves of do I want to give in to, you know, my imposter piece? Do I want to give in to those limiting beliefs? Or is it really possible that I could add one or two zeros onto my monthly, weekly, daily, yearly income, whatever that looks like? So Nikki, if somebody wants to learn more, if this is really burning within them and they want to get in, in contact with you, what's the best way for that to happen? My website, ecircleacademy.com. There's a button there in the top right-hand corner that says book a call. So just go there and click that button. And, and then that's going to be with you, a call with you? Person with me. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Well, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you for hanging out. I love all this stuff. There's, you know, there's just some great stuff here. And again, if you want to reach out to, to Nikki, um, jump on his website, it'll be in the show notes. And then all you have to do is click book a call. And then, you know, fasten your seatbelt, <laughs> because it's going to come hot and heavy, I'm guessing, but it's so authentic. I mean, you know, I really uh, respect what you're doing and I really appreciate you investing the time here. So can't wait to keep learning more from you. And, uh, you know, hey, if you're ever in North America, man, look us up. We're always willing to have lunch with you. So appreciate your time. God bless you, man. Thank you so much.